Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com. We do all kinds of wearables here. And today we're going to do something that I got to be honest with you is not a wearable. Yeah, but it's, it's in alignment with our channel because uh, one of the things that we do is review watches that profess to uh, check your sleep at night. They have sleep monitoring capability. But how accurate is it? And what exactly do you find out? We've seen so many different apps that show you um, everything from light sleep and deep sleep and awake times and some of them have REM sleeping and then they get even more esoteric as you get into the health bands. Well, we're going to take a look at something that's straight from the this is too good to be true department from a company I'm sure you've heard of, Withings. Yeah, they make all kinds of medical grade equipment that you can buy at CVS and places like that. Well, this is called a sleep tracking mat. It's something you slip under your mattress. <laughs> yeah, we are got to see this to believe it. We're just calling it sleep. This is straight from their website. Uh, it's about a hundred bucks or so. Sometimes you can get it on sale. If I've got a coupon for you, I'll put it in there. And um, yeah, it's a little pad that you put under your mattress, between your mattress and your box springs. Why? So that you can find out about your sleep. Now, there's nothing to wear. Now, I know what you're thinking. I mean, no, you can't leave your pajamas behind you you still do that, but there's nothing to wear on your arm or your leg or your head or any place else on your body to pick up the signals. This thing is going to do it all on its own. You see it right there? Stuck under the bed. Now, what you do get is information that's going to be transferred by Wi-Fi, I believe. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, some signal. There's no hookup to it directly to your phone. There's an app on your phone. You're going to see the normal things we usually see, these bar charts that show you your awake time, your sleep time, your REM sleep, you know, when you're dreaming, all of that kind of stuff. And something new, this thing is now set up to even detect breathing disturbances. And we've talked about that using some fitness uh, health bands that will actually monitor, monitor your blood oxygen level from the blood, you know, shooting the diodes into your, your uh, finger with a finger probe or your wrist uh, if you've got a watch on and detect sleep apnea. Well, this will be able to detect breathing disturbances directly from the mat and show that on an app. Yeah, really exciting stuff. So it's called the Sleep from Withings and here it is in its big box. Let's see what we've got. Advanced seamless um, tracking, sleep cycle monitoring, heart rate tracking, snore detection, automatic syncing via Wi-Fi, <clears throat> and again, nothing to wear except your pajamas. Got to wear your pajamas. Activate the home automatic scene with IFTT. That, you ever heard of that? It means if this, then that. So if you climb into bed and it tells that you went into bed, then that could be to dim your lights or to turn on the heat in your thermostat. If you get out of bed to go to the bathroom or get a drink of water, it could bring your lights up to a certain level. It's part of that home automation stuff. So that's kind of an added bonus to all of the stuff you get to. All right, I'll open the box. I can hear you guys. Wow. Oh, I got to get my slitter for this one. Look, they're sealed. I've noticed that some of you guys get so frustrated that you've even been posting the time when Mr. Tix actually turned on the watch, for example. Uh, <laughs> some of you like to hear about all this stuff, and uh, I certainly like talking about it. Look at this. It's like a little shoe box. Isn't that cute? Well, you got something fun that you can keep it in now. Um, how does this work? Yeah, okay. It looks like it... Yep, it opens this way. Oh, perfect Christmas present. Wow. An installation guide. We got to go through that because there's a, 
a process of calibration that this needs to go through. And here it is. Man, it's just too big for the camera at this distance. It's just a big, long um, thing. It's, it, it feels like something's here. And then this doesn't feel like anything. In fact, what I think is going on is these are air compartments, and this is going to fill with air, um, you know, like the cuffs do. I mean, these guys are in that, that uh, blood pressure uh, cuff um, world, so they probably use that technology for making this mat. And then in here, I believe, is the power supply. Now, unlike all of our watches and stuff that run on batteries, this puppy, uh, good, it's US, but you can get European if that's where you're ordering yours from. This thing has to be plugged in and all the time because it's gonna be on Wi-Fi and yeah, you don't wanna be having to get out of bed and charge your mat every night. Oh, trust me, there's gonna be a wire in there. Maybe we just uh, plug that into there. Yeah, okay. The wire's already attached. So we plug that in. We plug that in the wall. And we put this under the mattress like it shows here. Go through the installation guide for those of you who want to study it. Mm, it's got gray against uh, white. That's going to be a little hard to read. Everything that's in it. How to install it. Yeah, we haven't gotten to the point yet. Somebody's going to put the time up, I know. At 12 minutes and 37 seconds, he actually started to talk about the thing. Uh, this is going to be an interesting experience for both of us, for all of us, because I haven't ever done anything like this before. Uh, and, of course, I haven't used it. We just opened it. So first, I got to be able to put it under the mattress and get it calibrated. Then I got to sleep on it, right? Look at this, an FCC... Um, interface interference statement that must have to do with the wi-fi here it is for canada we got to collect some data got to put the app together got to show you the data on the app and yeah what you guys are hoping for i'm going to grab a couple of the watches that do um sleep time analysis and we're going to compare what this thing does and looks like with what we're getting with the, like a Spoven blade, for example, um, really detailed, uh, in-depth, scientific sleep, they call it, analysis. Okay, that's everything. The next is to get it all set up. Okay, you're going to get to see more about Mr. Tix than you ever thought you'd wanted to know. This is the uh, edge of my bed, and... I'm going to try to lift this up. Ugh. Look at that. There is uh, the box springs. And unlike most people, Mr. Tix has a board here and the regular box springs there. And an extra hair. There we go. What we're going to do is two different tests. We're going to pop this thing in here and we're going to put it right there it's supposed to be at your heart level sorry if the camera is off a little bit on the mattress box spring itself now this helps mr tick's lower back because this is too soft so our first set of tests will be with it against the box springs and later we'll put it on here just this a little bit so it's still under the heart and then we'll know whether it's better to have the mattress on something solid like the floor or wood or whether the box springs with a little bit of give is going to be good for it so now i just got to plug it in set it all up calibrate it and then get you some data all right notice the time now we're ready to begin with some results well by golly it really works i i it's it's amazing. I don't know how in the world it's doing it, but it really works. So we're going to show you that data in just a moment. And just to see if it really looks real, we're also going to show you the data from the Aura Ring that you always see me wearing. Uh, that was on last night, as well as the Spoven Blade um, wrist device that gave me a bunch of sleep readings amongst other things but as far as health mate now the withings tethering app that you connect in here that gives you this screen here's my first night's data we're going to have many many more it'll all be part of this this is going to be a long video for me to make not too terribly long for you to watch here we go
this uh, is the chart that you get. It's basically got three different colors in it, four different colors. You've got an awake time, which is the gray you see here before I went to bed. Then you've got deep sleep. Looks like I hit that pretty quickly. You got light sleep. And then you've got REM sleep, which is right here. Now, overall, with all the mumbo jumbo and magic that they can pull together from the things you're going to see down here, they gave me an overall sleep score of 73, like their picture 75. They call it an average night. All right. I was a little restless, actually. I slept better uh, other nights. I was a little <laughs> nervous about what was going to happen. But this is how it's broken down, and they give you kind of a, a reading on that. The duration, they said, was 6 hours and 41 minutes. Pay attention to that, because we'll see how that compares with the other devices. When you go in here, tells you a little bit about it, gives you your reading, and I'm just below the sweet spot as far as sleep duration goes. That's not time in bed now. That's your actual sleep duration. I got bad, bad for depth. What the heck is depth? Depth is um, your recuperating time. And I only spent 16% of my night time truly recuperating. It breaks down into 11% for deep, 5 for REM, and 84%, according to their measurement of me, was spent in light sleep. So you can't control the phases, but if you do things that help out your sleep, you should be able to increase your depth. Does that make sense? I hope so. I got regulatory, which is unknown. Now look at I have to have at least three nights of data within the last seven days to be able to estimate my average rise and bedtime. So first night, I'm not going to get data. So there will be more things to show up as I do this every night. And then we've got interruptions. And this says none. You woke up very little last night. Now, I've got the whole chart grayed out. And remember, these black bars here were rim sleep, right? And um, I, it's, this says I didn't wake up at all. Not true. Got up at least twice, went to the bathroom. One of them, significantly enough, as you're going to see in some of the other data, to fake the app. Uh, to think that I completely got up um, at four something in the morning and didn't go back to bed. So I was up. So on this side, erring on the side of not picking up that I was awake and out of bed, and the other one picking up um, that I was just, or not picking up that I went back to bed. So we are getting different results. Okay, next comes time to sleep. Again, I don't know how it does all of this stuff, but it knew from the time I crawled in bed that 12 minutes later, I was asleep. I'm getting extra points for falling asleep so quickly. Didn't feel like that for me. I literally was restless for over two hours in bed. I kept wanting to get up and peek at the, at the, the thing and see if it was moving. I wanted to see if I could feel it breathing underneath me or changing. I was nervous like a, a young boy getting a puppy for Christmas and wondering if it's okay Christmas night. So um, if I went to sleep in 12 minutes... I must have been really still while I was anxious in bed. But that's my reading of how I felt, and this is their reading of what the device interpreted. Let's see what my fall asleep time was on the other apps uh, when we get to those. Okay, and then time to get up. Boom! Zero minutes. I'm getting extra points for being bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. That is not my style, I tell you. However... I think I did spring up and go to the bathroom and never went back to bed. But normally I would <laughs> I would crawl out of bed. But um, here you go. It's giving uh, an interpretation of all of that stuff. And I'm on the low side of good, man. Look at that. I got up like zero minutes. Uh, normally good would be six minutes. Any laying around in bed longer than that is just too long. So that's their interpretation and reading on that. So all these factors came together to give me a score of 73. Now there's more data as well. Look at this. Ooh, yo, there's something coming. I got an average sleep heart rate of 58 beats per minute. And here 
is the overall heart rate chart throughout the night. Now, remember, I'm not wearing anything. Well, I have my pajamas on. That's all. And um, it's picking up my heart rate from a pad under the mattress. This is amazing science. Uh, and this is what it's getting. And um, see my trend. And it's going to say, why do you monitor it? A low sleep heart rate is a good health indicator. By the way, a good chart looks like this. We learned that from the Aura Ring. If you want to re, uh, revisit the review on the Aura Ring, which does all this kind of stuff as well, but for 300 bucks instead of $100 for this, um, you could do that. And it, it tells you a lot about your lifestyle. The low um, resting heart rate is great. So that just kind of tells you about your trend. Oh, what's this? Whoa. Okay. Average sleep heart rate 58. What's the impact? And, and there's all these cards you can go through. Wow. Wow. This is nightly in a three month period. On an annual basis, you can get all of this information. You can go back by date, which we don't need to because it was my first one. We can exit out of that. So this whole card can expand too. And then, and then, remember this part here? I showed you, I showed you this one. Detect breathing disturbances. Uh-huh. That's the next thing coming up. I had moderate breathing disturbances. There's a moderate amount of uh, breathing disturbances. See how it evolves? And here you go. Now, this is relatively new. It says that they've added to this whole process. But that mat, in addition to getting your heart rate, can listen to your breath, apparently, and see if you have breathing disorders. And it's saying that I got moderate. Um, and about doing breathing tests, you can take a specialized EP worth test or a stop bang screening test and so forth. Yeah, lots of stuff in here. And then again, cards that relate to all of this. We're not going to go into all that detail because we're showing you the data today. But basically, it's saying that I had a moderate level of breathing disturbance throughout the evening and then snoring. <laughs> yep, 35 minutes of snoring. Well, by golly, what does it say? Here's in bedtime, here's my rise time, and these are considered snoring events. And sure enough, I can tap on them and show you that I had from 3.43 to 4 o'clock, about 15, 17 minutes worth of snoring going on. Near the 4 a.m. mark, let's see how that stacks up with sleep apnea readings from another device because we can combine all this stuff to get an overall picture. I had six episodes of snoring throughout the evening, and that represented 9% of the, of the evening for the whole amount added together. And what's cool is this shows you, when you see one of these, how long it was. That one was 17 minutes. That one was 7 minutes. So it's not like, at least this night, Mr. Tix was snoring all night long, as Mrs. Tix sometimes alludes to. Now I've got proof. Ha -ha. Uh, <laughs> I only had 35 minutes of good snoring for the evening. And then you can attach comments uh, to this whole thing, too. So this is the type of analysis we get. This is only one day so far, but I wanted you to get a feel for it. Now let's switch over. I'm going to go over to H-Band, which is the app that this one, um, the Spoven Blade, uses. There'll be a link in the show notes if you want to go take a look at the review of this. And There's many reviews of this app and what it can do. Look at this now. The sleep analysis coming from this little wearing thing, and it's using special red diodes in here to interrogate throughout the night. It has both red and green, you know, Christmas colors. Um, green is usually used for the heart rate and red is used for the deeper sleep analysis. Now, here's the same night. It's saying I went to bed at 1131, got up at 613 a.m. This was 1136 and got up at 617. We're getting pretty close, right? Okay. This talks about a sleep duration of 6 hours and 42 minutes and a wake up 
of uh, 14 minutes, which is 3% too much, too long waking during sleep is poor sleep quality. Now, um, that's different. Uh, than what we saw in the other one, which had me just jumping out of bed like there was a fire alarm going off. Preparation, though, it says I was asleep before I hit the pillow. Uh, so we're getting some mixed um, readings overall in these sensors that are trying to determine when you go to bed and when you get up. REM sleep, here, this is noting that I was in the state of REM um, 40% of the time, which is higher than normal, that I should have been like really having all kinds of vivid dreams. So it comes back to, all right, let's put it, put him on the witness stand and ask him the question, sir, did you dream last night or not? Uh, uh, yeah, I think I did, but I don't remember it. I still got to work on my lucid dreaming skills. I did dream, but I don't know that I dreamt 40% worth. That's a lot. But this gives you REM sleep, light sleep, and deep sleep. Let's pay attention. Two and a half hours of REM. All, all two and a half hours, almost three hours of light, and, a, and an hour of deep sleep, right? What did we get over here? We got... Where does it show us all that data? Was it in here? Oh, no. This is this will show you if you touch there. It'll show you all of that stuff. Um, duration? No. Darn, where's all of the breakdown of uh, light and depth? There we go, there we go. 45 minutes deep, 21 minutes of rim, five and a half hours of light, according to the map. Two and a half rim, one hour deep, and two, uh, almost three hours of light, according to the band. All right, we're starting to see some discrepancies here. You know, you take a heart rate, and pretty much most of these devices are going to give you accuracy. But you start looking deeper into sleep uh, data collection, and, and it's getting it skewed. It's, it's not lining up. Maybe sleep time and wake-up time are close, but look at everything in between. All of these are little three minute two or three minute increments of jumping between light deep rim all that stuff deep is the deep blue i think up here and light is the light blue and red is the and i can't even hit a rim there's a rim one minute of rim sleep right there 246 to 247 so this one seems to be Noisy. It's 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 picking up stuff. I don't dream for for thirty five seconds. You know, um, nobody does. I don't believe so. This needs some sort of a filter on it to give you bigger chunks of when you're really in REM sleep or really in deep sleep. Same time though. This one, I don't know. It's uh, it seems like too big of a chunks. It doesn't really catch some of the deep sleep or REM sleep, in my opinion, that are happening when it's just saying light sleep. Maybe because it's not as sensitive, because it's on a mattress, you know, hidden below you, and it's trying to feel your breath rate movement somehow with sensors. But this is the actual data, and I only have one day so far. So we got that, we got that, without going into, sorry, a lot of other stuff here. Let's switch over and say, well, what the heck did the ring do? Here's the aura ring, and look at this, 1124 roughly, same time going to bed, but at 426 a.m., remember, I told you, got up a couple times, went to the bathroom, it said I never came back to bed. And so it locked me in for a short night of sleep. By the way, this one, because it's got all sorts of sensors in the ring, also monitors my movement. And you see I did have quite a bit of movement here at 4 in the morning when I got up. It's showing me uh, awake time at the top, light, sleep, and deep sleep. And I did find that if I touch this and I turn this, there we go. I can show you uh, spread out a little bit more. Now, sadly, 
I mean, this is a, an editing mode, so I could edit the beginning and end timing if it was wrong. But I'm, uh, none of them let me touch and show you the actual segments uh, here from the ring of when I'm in those different modes. And it's not as deeply detailed as the uh, other ones either in what it's uh, giving us. But it does show you movement in correlation with your sleep stages. Resting heart rate is available on the ring. And this has this pattern. Usually a good night for me starts out with a higher heart rate and then it slowly comes down. Sometimes it's not picking it up, you know, on the finger. Other times it is. And it gives you your overall resting heart rate and your lowest, which is uh, 52 is my minimum. And average was 60 for the night. And how did that correlate with our resting heart rate here? 58 okay so yeah we're coming in pretty close 52 average 60 if we're looking at the average um, but this is the kind of data that you're getting uh, from the ring also uh, it does an analysis when you're using the ring of all kinds of things see it it, it credited me for only three and a half hours of total sleep which it says is too short so a lot of these other things fell off because it didn't get the, the last hour or two of sleep um, for me. But it is showing you a nice green line, a blue line is a good thing, and the red ones are I'm supposed to be taking, uh, paying attention to. And here's some more sleep efficiency. There's that special number, 70%, and uh, the health mate from the mat is giving me 73%. So that's a beginning. Now I'll come back after I've got at least a week worth of data and we'll take a look at this again. Now with all that data fresh in our minds, uh, let's take a quick look at a bunch of days all in a row comparing first the uh, data derived from the Spoven Blade watch in this side and from the Withings mat in this one. Now we looked at the 9th of December falling asleep 1136, 1131, waking up 617. 613, score of 73, got two on this one. But what does it look like for other days? Here's the 10th, 73 matching up again, got a little bit better score. I'm just going to let you guys freeze on the data and take a look at it and analyze it as you choose. Um, we'll just kind of skip through all of these. Here's Friday, can I do that here? Nope, I gotta hit the button. Uh, Friday the 11th, that's kind of in the way. This shows three wake times, not quite sure. I got 83, went back down to two. That's how the numbers are matching up. Saturday then came up with uh, three awake times, nothing showing here. Back down to 73, two stars there. 11.09, 12.47, that's a big difference, 5.58, 6.13. Am I on the same day? Is this the same person? Yeah, same me, different data. 13th, here we go, 11.24, 7.10, kind of close. 96, look at this one, got 96 on this. Depth was good. Uh-huh. I'll just show you some of this. Good regularity. Last seven nights. Data right there. Uh, interruptions, none. That was my last night, it said. Time to sleep was 13 minutes. That's in the good side. Time to get up, nothing. So that gave me a 96 score, followed by an 87 on the 14th, which is shown here on this one. And 618, 556, 1048, 1035. But totally different results when it comes to your actual sleep information. Duration 721, seven and a half. Yeah, yeah. And last night, because this is Monday, I believe, uh, we've got this. Oh, Tuesday today. There are three more longer wake, awake times. And these are fairly realistic. I do remember getting up toward morning three times and going back and laying down a little bit and then hopping back out of bed. 
Uh, again, I'm getting low sleep qualities on here. Uh, two stars, basically, on most of these, two to three. This is the lowest I got, 64, right here. Uh, so that's the data comparing the mat with the band. Now I'm going to run through and bring up the data on the ring for you. So once again, this band is probably about half the cost of the mat, and the mat is about a third the cost of the ring, and the ring, the aura ring, this one right here, is really an advanced scientific piece of, of amazing magic. Never leaves my finger except to charge it. Here's the data. We looked at each of these separately. We're back on the ninth right now. I got a 59 in terms of my overall readiness. Sleep score was 73. Now here, my sleep score is 51. We looked at that data. Let's take another day. Here we go. 73, again, I'm at 69 readiness. Now readiness is a combination of all kinds of things that go into that. Sleep score, I would imagine, is more like this. So when I go into sleep and I come into here, we've got the... Uh, Oh, I think this is just describing it for us, right? Yeah. So, well, we've got this. we got the, the chart of all of the stuff that's going on there. Uh, this has got different categories to it. Here's the matching chart that we would be looking at with the awake time, rim time, light and deep sleep times, resting heart rate is all in here, 55. What was this one? 51, average 56. So those are tracking pretty well. Better, it seemed like, than when we did the uh, the band. Um, 83 here. Thursday, okay. Come on, oh, i got to get out of sleep and back here to Friday. Okay, this had jumped up from 73 to 83. This has gone from 69 to 75 and 66 to 70. So the trend is there, if nothing else. And then we went from 83 back down to 73. I'm matching at 73, coming down from 75. Uh, 63 there. 96, the really great Sunday. Um, on my Sunday here, I went from 73 to another 73. 68-ish for the sleep score. Oh, yeah, you get your activity, you know, workout stuff in this thing as well. And actually, if I wanted to go into readiness and show you the weekly readiness information, that's there. Here's the overall thing where you see all kinds of stuff. This is your um, resting heart rate, I believe. I can bring up body temperature. And this is the deviation in body temperature from my normal once it figured that out. And this is the precursor to whether you might have an infection or virus coming on if you start seeing the uh, temperature rise. Sometime way back here is when I got my flu shot. Yep. Sure enough, not the virus, vaccine, but the basic flu shot had a temperature of about four degrees higher for a couple of days, went back down. So really fun stuff if you got the money to buy the ring, the Aura ring, about 300 minus 20%. Sometimes you can get it on sale or the $100 mat or the roughly 50 40 $50 band. All of that contributes to the different levels of detail of data. And then I've got uh, yesterday, which is here, which is here. And again, I can come in and look at the overall sleep pattern. Sleep pattern, he says. There you go. This is what they look like together. And finally, let's get back to today and finish this up. Today meaning last night, which is right here, and uh, overall readiness, and the heart rate, and your average and minimum were here, and here we got 55, and we've got the overall chart and the sleep score of 64. And for this one today, well, it hasn't gone into tonight yet. So the, from yesterday, 64, 65, 75. Too much data, really. 
<laughs> okay, it's about time. I'm overloaded too. My system ooey, has stopped. All right. Well, I think you've seen enough to make a, an educated uh, decision on whether or not sticking a mat under your mattress and sleeping on it could give you the kind of data that you could make some rational um, inferences about your overall health and well-being. Let me tell you one really interesting thing about uh, this particular device and the app it tethers to. When you hook this up, you're hooking it up on Wi-Fi. So that means it's using Wi-Fi to go through and do all of uh, the data collection of what's coming in the mat. All you got to do is plug it in uh, a USB connector, in, you know, in a charger in the wall or on a phone or a computer or whatever, you know, whatever charger you got, and just leave it like that. It's going to do everything else automatically. Now, the other thing is, before, because this thing is actually um, on Wi-Fi, all of the data will stream to it either from Wi-Fi or cellular from anywhere in the world. So what I'm getting at is if you've got an elderly person, a mom, a grandma, somebody that you want to kind of monitor their health but you don't want to be invasive, and you can just get permission to just put this little mat under their bed and walk away. And as long as they're on, on Wi-Fi, which they probably are if you're Zooming with them during COVID or whatever, anytime you want to, anywhere from your phone on cellular connecting into the internet or on Wi-Fi, as long as you can connect into the internet with your password and everything tied into this unit, you can pull up all of the data and you could sit there and monitor remotely from anywhere what breathing disturbance level that person had or snoring. All of that. You can make your own comments to the database here and you could get a feel for whether or not um, there's an issue going on that you need to, to look into and just kind of make sure that the health of that elderly relative is, is in good condition. Similarly, you can do these kind of things with the ring and there's even a web interface and all of that stuff with the uh, deviation from uh, your nightly temperature, that's all available too over the web on a daily basis, plus all the data that you saw us getting in uh, the Aura Ring um, charts here. Uh, your resting heart rate, your heart rate variability, which we haven't even begun to talk about. But we are going to. We are. We Have you subscribed? I hope so. We're, we're going to get deep into this. Here's my overall daily. These are all the different days. Uh, heart rate variability. Streaming to an app, it also goes to a web interface and you can stratify and dice and slice the data any way you want to and have a really good look at it. This is so sophisticated that there's been a, um, an ongoing global study of healthcare providers wearing the ring, providing feedback to look at a technology of how they can prejudge whether or not a person is catching COVID before the symptoms show up, pre-asymptomatic. There's a sponsored study on that using the ring, really advanced stuff. But we're here right now to talk about the map. That's what this video is about. You saw us install it. You've seen the data a complementary connection of using the mat together with the band in particular would give you a nice balance of data. And if you can do it, having the ring as well gives you the complete portfolio from temperature all the way up to uh, activity tracking that you get with the band. Wow. Wow. We've covered a lot and we love to do that here at Smartwatch Ticks. And if you haven't subscribed, we sure invite you to. Just go to smartwatchticks.com. Takes you right in our front door. You can sign up for free, uh, hit the little bell, and you'll be notified when we uh, put up new, uh, new videos. And we are deviating from just watches to all kinds of wearables and even lay onables, I guess, in this case. Uh, I hope you like it. Uh, I sure do. I'm having a lot of fun with this stuff, and we're going to continue it into 2021 because the technology is just continuing to improve. We'll see you on the other side. Thanks for watching, gang.